Insider, February edition of the show. We've got sports at all different kind of, of stages of the season here. A few sports kind of getting ready for the stretch run of the season. We'll also talk to lacrosse, who is just beginning their campaign for the spring. And we'll go ahead all the way to next fall with signing day for football and soccer. We'll talk about that as well. So a busy show. We'll get right into it here, starting with track and field, who's getting down into some of the bigger meets now of the indoor portion of their season. We're joined by head coach Sam Johnson and uh, junior multi-event athlete Callie Burney. Thank you very uh, uh, both very much for being here today. Thanks for having us, Dan. And uh, Sam, I guess we'll start with you. Uh, a few more meets now since we talked to you last. You were down in Mankato again uh, last weekend. Are you fairly happy with the progress the team is showing here over the past few weeks? Yeah, we've uh, really done, uh, made it a point to kind of capitalize in um, really uh, highlight our performances uh, with PRs throughout the season. We're really um, trying to get that information out to our followers and our supporters. And um, it's, it's been a, even a shock to us coaches that, that now that we're keeping these totals uh, running through the season that um, how many we're actually having meet to meet. And um, so we've kind of progressed from the early part of the season to the midpoint here. And um, it, it's, we've been grinding really. It's, it's been a, a tough stretch of, of training and competing on the weekends and um, getting to the point now where um, we're t starting to flip the switch a little bit and get into a place where athletes are feeling comfortable and ready to compete hard on the weekend and not necessarily showing up um, with the, the dead legs and, and all that kind of stuff. So. We had talked kind of at the beginning of the year. You felt you had some more depth this year. The multi-event has been a strength of the team over the past uh, couple years, I guess. But have there been any areas of the team that have maybe stood out as a little bit of a surprise where they've performed a little better than maybe you even expected beginning of the year? Yeah, I mean, the, the vertical jumps for the females have, have been awesome. Um, that's pole vault and high jump. We're, we've got a, a couple of provisional qualifiers in the women's high jump. Um, we actually are the eighth-ranked event squad uh, for women's high jump in the nation. So they... Uh, you take four, four athletes, combine their uh, performances across the board, and um, we come out eighth, eighth place there. And then um, a couple of highly ranked girls in, in the women's pole vault, too. So um, that's, that's been a kind of a, I guess, expected, but uh, they're doing better than, than what we even thought they could do at this point, too. So. And Kelly, you've certainly been a big part of that effort, setting the school record in the high jump in this most recent meet. When you kind of looked at that mark going into the year, did you target that as, as a number you could maybe hit, kind of a goal for yourself this year? Um, actually, I that seemed kind of like an aggressive goal at first, just because last year I think I finished with 160. So now jumping at 169, which is five, six and a half, just kind of blows my mind a little bit. It's kind of surprising. I think when you look at track, you know, it's kind of easy to see how you prepare for running events, things like that. How do you prepare for a jumping event? What kind of workouts are you doing to get ready for that? Um, just making sure that you're staying warm. And we get lots of reps in practice just so you're ready to go when it comes to the meet time because you don't have a lot of time to get reps in before um, you jump. So just making sure that you're warmed up and you're clean and focused. And uh, I know you didn't finish a couple of the events in the last one in the pentathlon, but you've been part of a very strong effort for the team there. How do you feel? What kind of progress do you feel you're making in the pentathlon as a whole? Um, uh, I think yesterday we had a good workout, so that's just kind of giving me more, more confidence with that. So I'm getting really excited, and I think that it's going to go well. But there's still a lot more to work on and some tweaks to be made and just making sure that we're polished. Sam, you mentioned this is a tough point in the season with the workouts and kind of keeping everybody fresh, but what sort of needs to happen over the next month or so to have the team in a really good spot to kind of peak in the in the conference meet? Yeah, well, uh, we do need to, to take care of some lingering issues with regard to health and, and injuries. Um, we have arrived at this point in the season a little bit banged up, but um, so we've really stressed to the athletes that, uh, you know, they need to be an active participant in their rehab and recovery from these ailments. and. Uh, but really, it, it's we're going according to schedule. Um, you know, we've been around long enough in this program to know that um, as the workouts change and as we uh, prepare to taper, that the legs will come back, and and that's when we expect the best performances. So it's it's all going according to plan as long as we can take care of some of these ailments. And what are some of the meets you have coming up between now and conference? Um, well, next weekend uh, will be the the start of championship season with the. the indoor multi-event championships down at Mankato. Um, that'll be Sunday and Monday of next weekend. And then um, kind of tune up with a final meet um, 
at the U of M that, that following week and, and really just um, getting the people that need an opportunity to compete one more time before conference at that meet. Um, and then it'll be championship weekend before we know it at the end of February. So, Well, Sam and Kelly, thank you both very much for being here today, and good luck this month. Yep. Thanks, thank Dan. Thank you. Sam Johnson and Kelly Burney here on Golden Bear Insider as the track team continues on with the indoor portion of the schedule. Conference coming up at the end of the month, as we talked about, and then, of course, get into that uh, outdoor season later on in the spring as well. The staff does, but you know we're pretty biased, and, and we believe that what we uh, picked up is going to be a, a huge uh, advantage for us, and we're going to make a lot of headway and improvements with our program. Overall, it's obviously a lot of different players. I want to ask you about each one of them, but I mean, what do you feel that kind of the strengths of the class are? Definitely, a strength is a defensive backfield. You know, we we certainly need some more guys that can run and cover. Uh, the game nowadays is spread open, and you have to have athletes out there for special teams purposes as well as the variety of packages that we want to play in defense. So we're, um, you know, we, we brought a lot of good defensive backs in, and of course, we have one that came in uh, that's had tested, battle tested at Crookson as a starter there came in this spring and Deion uh, Wallish and then in addition to that we have a bunch of uh, freshman players too that are going to be great. Um, on top of that we were able to pick up some defense alignment um, which is you know you went up front both on offense and defense and we have a, a young man Colton Follier that came in for spring. He's a freshman that graduated early uh, to get here in spring and that's the first time we've had that. Um, and then you know there's a, there's a lot of good players honestly so it's hard to signal sig- uh, single anybody out, but we're real excited about the entire class. We felt like all the needs were addressed and, and we're anxious to work with these kids. You're recruited from all over the country and it's certainly good to have different areas you can go to, but leading the way, 10 players from the state of Minnesota, just how important is it to be able to keep a lot of those local kids around here and build a good base right around St. Paul? We absolutely want to get the best players from the Twin City area. You know, our, our first priority is getting kids that are going to help us get better and help us win games in NSIC and win championships. So that's the first uh, prerogative. You know, we, uh, we're we going to take somebody from, we don't even care where they're from, as long as they're going to, uh, you know, help us win. And they're a quality young men, and, and they're going to go to class, of course. But um, it is important to get kids from a local area just because it's easier. You know, it's, uh, you know, retention may be stronger. I guess that's debatable. But we just feel like if you have support from the local high schools, it's just, um, your programs are better. We, we, we'd rather get as many kids as we can from the Midwest if, we, if possible and then supplement our recruiting maybe from Florida or, or Arizona, possibly California. Uh, but, yeah, we feel really good about I think there was 18 total between Minnesota and Wisconsin, and that's important for us to continue to grow that number as we go forward. Coming off of last year, first year back with the with the program, what were kind of the areas you identified, not just through recruiting, but through kind of internal improvement that the team needed to get better at to take a step forward next year? Well, I think just overall commitment level by our current team. You know, we are um, have high standards, and we tell our players it's not easy to be great. Uh, being great is lone, lonely company, and we've been able to really uh, step forward with that piece, and now we're talking about who's five minutes early uh, to practice versus maybe guys that would trickle in uh, late. So we're really come a long ways with what these players are doing. Uh, the commitment that we're getting from our players is phenomenal. We're working real hard on team chemistry. We, wanna, we definitely want to build a stronger brotherhood and a stronger football family. So that's an emphasis this spring. Um, we're going to have some 5 a.m. spring practices, which is going to create more commitment. And the more the players invest, the more it means to them on game day. Uh, so I think those are some things that we're currently working on. And in terms of areas that we have to improve, I mean, we have to get better at every area. And football's uh, a neat game because there's so many pieces to the game. And, you know, little improvements all over the place creates a lot of improvement overall. Uh, so we're excited about, um, you know, making those improvements because we think that there's a lot of different areas that are, that are going to be vastly improved from last year. And, and we believe that process is going to lead to more victories ultimately. Well, Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations on being able to announce the recruiting class, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again here before we get going in the fall. Thanks for your time. Head Coach Shannon Courier from the football team coming off of signing day yesterday, Concordia announcing their class, and you can look at the uh, full list of incoming student-athletes for the 2017 season on the website cspbears.com, biographical information on all of them available as well, so certainly Check that out, Concordia's Signing Day website, linked to on social media as well. So 
Going to talk some lacrosse now as the lacrosse team been talking to them off and on over the past couple uh, years. Finally ready to start some games now. Had the first exhibition game uh, last weekend and next weekend begin the 2017 season. So a lot of excitement there around the Concordia do do uh, Dome and joined by head coach Mo Dunnigan, also freshman Kaylee Heinel. Thank, uh, thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. And um, I guess just for both of you, kind of, it's been a lot of preparation, getting ready for the game, a lot of anticipation, and an exhibition game. But what did it feel like to just be able to take the field for that first time? Yeah, you want to take that one? Um, well, I got to say, I think everyone was a little nervous at first, and like we were all kind of like, oh, this is really happening. Like We're actually doing this, and we're making history. And I think everyone was kind of like we got together before the game we're like all right guys like this is our time to like finally show like what minnesota lacrosse is about and like take the field yeah it was it was really exciting to kind of see them progress throughout the game as well right because there definitely were a couple of nerves that we were working through in the beginning and we had a little bit of a slower start um, and then everything started clicking and we started coming together and, and we obviously came out with a pretty strong Pretty strong win at the end there. We're we're proud of them, that's for sure. Is there kind of a moment within the game where either one of you could kind of see the team settling in and starting to just treat it like any other game? I would say about halfway through that first half is when you know, we the other team called a timeout. They they were um, you know a little upset with the way the game was going, and we we called them in and said, okay, here we are. Let's let's now move forward from there. So. It's a little bit of a unique situation this year with it not being a full NSIC sport. And as you kind of look at the whole schedule now, as I mentioned, you're going to get into the game starting next weekend. How did you sort of go through the process of picking the opponents that you're going to be playing this year? Yeah, and, you know, that was definitely one of the hardest pieces about the whole gig is, uh, you know, we are we're on an island. Our nearest competition is about 400 miles away. So when you're looking at scheduling opponents, there's, that's a whole a whole complex, especially not being in a conference for our first year. Um, we do still have a 16-game schedule where we are traveling all across the nation and very fortunate to be able to bring these ladies um, all around. But it was, uh, it was quite the process, but we're really excited to have seven home games plus that exhibition game for all of our fans to come out and check us out. With basically the whole team being freshmen, you have a couple tra uh, transfers in there. In some ways, though, has that kind of made it easier where everybody on the team is sort of at the same point and you can kind of coach everybody the same way? I find it as a huge blessing in disguise. You know, a lot of people see that and say, whoa, a ton of freshmen. And it's been amazing. You know, really, we've been able to build the entire foundation exactly the way the coaches see it. Um, and, and like you mentioned, they're all coming in at the same plane. So we got to kind of start from scratch and really peel back all the layers and, and build up our athletes the way we want to see them perform on the field. And Kaylee, for you, has that kind of maybe helped a little bit with the team bonding, team chemistry, that you're all sort of in, in it together, figuring out college lacrosse at the same time? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think everyone's, like, on the same page, and our team has gotten, like, so close because we're all freshmen. Like, even Callie and Shayla, like, they may be older, but they're definitely people to look up to. And, like, we can talk to them about situations that they've been in before and stuff like that, so it's really helped out a lot. How would you describe your style of play? Um... I don't know. I guess like we're all pretty like scrappy and like we're definitely all work hard and like we all really want this. So I think the team has come together a lot and we're going to show like what we're all about. What made you uh, interested in coming to Concordia and playing for the team this year? Well, definitely the first division two in the state of Minnesota is the most amazing thing to be a part of. Like it's honestly an honor that we get to start this up here. And uh, Coach, for you, what are just kind of your goals for the first month now and you really kind of get into the games here starting next week? Yeah, the, the biggest goal for our program is that we build. You know, we build off of this win. We don't, we don't take this win and say, all right, we got it all figured out. Um, you know, that was step one of a whole bunch. Uh, so we just have to make sure we utilize all of these things that were taken away in training, taken away through the exhibition game, and applying it um, as we continue through. Well, Mo Dunning, Kaylee Heinel, congratulations getting the season underway, and thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you. And so the full lacrosse schedule also available on the website, cspbears.com. You can check that out, and we will have webcasts for most of the home games uh, this season as well, so you can check that out. And um, 
tune in if you can't make it out to the Concordia Dome, but we will have those available uh, for you this year. Certainly excited to get lacrosse uh, started here at Concordia. But another team announcing their recruiting class yesterday as part of National Signing Day. The soccer team bringing in eight new players. So we're joined by head coach Steve Bellis, assistant coach Taryn McMillan. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us, Don. Appreciate it. And uh, I guess kind of start out the same way I talked to uh, Shannon about the football class, eight different players, and we don't necessarily have to go through it individually, but what were you kind of looking at with this class and what do you feel sort of the overall strengths are? Um, wow, it's a good question. Um, it's definitely an exciting time when you're, any signing day is exciting. So we're excited to bring a lot of character, I think, with this group. Um, definitely not a vanilla kind of class. There's, there's, there's some real characters in the group. They've got... Um, some good student athletes, obviously, um, some good personalities. Um, but in terms of positions, we knew that we could be pretty specific in what we were looking for. So hopefully we brought in the, uh, the kind of players that can kind of elevate the program to the next level. So I think the biggest thing, though, is that we've got some real good character in the group. And I know in some of your comments yesterday, you highlighted the work the assistant coaches were going to do, were able to do. We have Taryn here. What uh what kind of did you see from the assistants that really impressed you and, and the way they assisted you in the recruiting process? Um, I think I'll answer that specifically, you know, with Taryn in mind. I think Taryn coming off the back of a, the senior year and she knows the program inside and out. She knows the kind of players that we're looking for and going back to character and personality and not just soccer kids. Um, I think Taryn's been a, a really good guide on, on that. Um, as she's met players that have come on campus, as she's been out to games, done a gazillion campus tours and met parents and, and really got a good feel for what kind of character we're getting. And she's never shy on, on, on giving me her opinion on, on a player or on how she plays or the style of play. But obviously in terms of, all right, hey Steve, this is a good kid, we should, we should kind of pursue this. So um, I think Taryn's been a, a huge help this year. And uh, Taryn, what was kind of your strategy overall? Did you have certain regions you were kind of focusing in on? How much of it is kind of divided between seeing in person, looking at video? Just what was your general approach kind of one of the first times you've gone through this? Yeah, it was really exciting. Um, obviously, I was more in the Minnesota area that I went and looked at games. Um, it's kind of nice. I also have younger siblings that are right at that age where they're looking for recruits too, so I knew a lot of the teams actually for that age. Um, but I actually got to see some other ways of doing it, watching video of teams, you know, that might be a little bit further away um, in the States. And so I've watched video and contacted coaches from different areas outside the Midwest. So that was a whole new process for me that was really cool to be a part of. And how much did your experience as a player kind of factor into your recruiting strategy? Um, I, it, it worked perfectly. I, I I'm a little biased sometimes. I kind of look at people. I'm like, oh, that's that's how I like to play. So that's the kind of player I like. But um, no, it, it was it was really easy to make that transition. Um, just because I I know what college athletics is about. So I want to find people that are you know going to be at that same level. And I and you can see it even without them playing. You know, in warm ups or out, outside of it, you can see it. So it's cool to be in that position from being a player and recruiting. Could certainly reach out to Steve for some assistance. Was there anyone else that sort of gave you some advice on, on how to approach it? Uh, yeah, big one is my dad. He's been scouting since I was born. He's been an assistant coach, a head coach, a scout, and then a, now an assistant coach. So he gave me the full load. I've been watching him do everything that he's done, and every time I need some assistance, that's the first person I call. How did you uh, do you kind of balance between looking at because most of these players they play in high school they also play at the club level mm -hmm. how do you kind of balance looking at, at those two performances and what you know what's going to be meaningful for the the team here um, definitely the high school level and club level they're a little bit different but you just kind of go into it and you see um, who they're playing you know the the area the conferences where they're at and that and uh, yeah, the, it's definitely a little bit different between the two, but you can tell a good player from who they play with and yeah. we'll, so we'll, can also. We'll tend to lean on club coaches much more than we would lean on high school coaches. Club soccer in Minnesota in particular is year round. Um, with the introduction of some really elite level teams in Minnesota, generally the club coach has a, 
a bigger impact on the player, to be honest, not to be disrespectful to the high school coaches, but generally the club coaches know more about the kid, their attitude, uh, obviously the family background, and you generally get better interaction with a good club coach. And we've got uh, we've got some really good connections locally, but also you know in the Midwest, I've got some great connections with club coaches and club directors, and and those are the people that we'll lean on as we progress from this signing group to to the next and the next after that. So. And as you look at the team moving forward, you get to bring in uh, this group of players. You also have a lot of players coming back from last year's roster. Is there a pretty good sense of excitement now bringing all those players back in, in addition oh, yeah. to what you did yesterday? Yeah, I can't wait for August. Let's let's bring it on. I think <laughs> it would be fantastic. I think you can't get more excited than, than signing day. And you're already looking at formations and, and some different changes. It's not to say that we don't already have a good group. And I think our current group will mesh really well with the with the incoming kids. I think the team chemistry will, will flow very easily. I, don't, I can't see too many issues going forward. But in terms of excitement, I think we've got some opportunities to play some different formations, some different systems, put some players in some different positions. And I think our spring season will give us a give us a good kind of a springboard to kind of change a few things around. And then knowing that we've got incoming players that can slot into some different positions will be will be huge. So. What's the schedule like for the team during that spring season? So we have um, four uh, home scrimmage dates that we'll we'll get on our website here pretty soon, and then we go up to St Cloud and we play 11 v 11 against St Cloud. Um, so we'll start um, March 10th is the beginning of our spring season, um, and that'll be good. It'll be um, it's kind of a short time frame, but we'll get some good games in and some solid practices, and and our players will leave you know in in unbelievably good shape and and ready and excited to be back in August. All right, well, we appreciate you both being here today, and uh, congratulations again on the signing day announcement. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Steve Bellis and Taryn McMillan here on Golden Bear Insider. As, again, you can, as I mentioned with football, check out the entire soccer recruiting class on the website, cspbears.com, so you can get uh, biographical information on all of those eight incoming players. So we continue on with the show here, getting into the final month of the regular season for the women's and men's basketball teams. And women's basketball team has caught fire over the last uh, month or so. We're certainly playing well last time we did the show, but haven't lost since then. Eight-game winning streak now, including two uh, great weekends on the road. So certainly congratulations on that. We're joined by head coach Amanda Johnson and uh, senior Caitlin Russell. So uh, thank you both for being here today. And I guess uh, just... Sort of start, I guess, uh, with you, Amanda. What is what have you noticed that's been kind of the constant here over these last eight games as the team has really been able to go on this run? The biggest thing is they've just been consistent. We talked about that in our pregame talk. Um, just earning the right to win and continuing by being consistent with everyone knowing their role and continuing to do it. I mean, Caitlin's been a beast in the post. We've had Anna Schmidt doing her thing, Kira rebounding and shaping and point guard. So I think if our girls know their role and continue to do that and be consistent, we're going to continue to play well. What was the team able to take away from that Sioux Falls win, kind of a signature win with a team that at that point was toward the top of the division and getting it on the road? You know, we knew it was going to be a tough game, especially at Sioux Falls. Um, we were just stressing to the girls again, just being consistent and holding them to 62 points, not rebounding them. Um, and we knew it was going to come down to the end. Uh, Sioux Falls came out just on a roll. I mean, they couldn't miss, but then I kind of told the girls that they weren't going to continue to shoot like this on fire. So just, you know, keep continuing to play hard. And I mean, things were just, I mean, Caitlin came in and had a really big game in, in her post play and you know everyone just kind of played together and knew how important the game was and we ended up winning. Caitlin you've uh well, you know early on in the year we're in and out of the starting lineup you've seen your minutes increase now and certainly the scoring output rebounding uh both those numbers have gone way up what has kind of been you think the key for you over the last month month and a half here? Uh, just working hard in practice and um I know my teammates have been pushing me and we've been pushing each other in practice at, like every day week by week. How much has it helped you to have those defined roles in the starting five and you kind of know what everybody's going to be able to do? Um, it helps a lot. Like, we trust each other. Like, on defense, we know each other. Like, we have each other's back. Um, if someone gets, like, burned, like, I'll have their back. If I need help, they'll help me. So. For you working out of the post, I mean, two uh, players that can handle the ball, Mache with Jones, has certainly distributed well in this run. Anna Schmidt can do it as well. How much does it help you to have two players that can get you the ball in, in good places and good areas to score? I mean, if we didn't have people who could distribute the ball, I don't think we would like 
be as successful as we are now. So. And, uh, Coach, were you once again, uh, team, certainly the identity of the team has been defense this year, yep. and that's how you've been able to win a lot of games. But this most recent one now against Crookston, a little <laughs> more of a shootout, 90 to 84. And in a way, was it kind of nice to see that the team could win a different style of game like that? Yes. And, and I think I always, I told the girls, I know they can score. It's just their defense. Um, and some games, though, this year we've struggled offensively, depending on zone. Zones have been kind of our toughest battle. But now I think we're adjusting to learning how to play out of a zone. And I mean, it was pretty much who could outscore who it was kind of stressful because on defense I didn't think we could get a stop but then offense we could score too at the same time um, but it was just nice seeing the girls could score but at the same time I just think it makes it so much more difficult us for us on offense to score when we keep giving up so many points so that's why I stress this our defense really coming into play and getting stops um, but I was pleased with our effort um, offensively against Crookston. And Kate, when you're getting kind of down to the final stretch here of your senior year and certainly the team with big goals for this season if you know felt a greater sense of urgency kind of knowing you're you're getting down to the last handful of games here yeah I feel like each and every player is coming in more working harder on like not just in practice but they're coming in on their own time shooting um, getting extra work some people will do extra ball handling I've noticed and it's just like that final stretch where we want to like continue to play and uh, coach Kev get to come back home here now this weekend you bring in St. Cloud State Minnesota Duluth uh, Teams you don't see quite as often mm -hmm. coming out of the other division, but what can you kind of tell us about them and what you expect this weekend? You know, St. Cloud and Duluth are both coming off big wins. Um, St. Cloud just beat Augustana, and then Duluth just beat Wayne, so I know they're going to come ready to go, and, you know, we're on an eight-game winning streak, so I think teams are out to really get us. Um, but it's just nice. We are going to be at home. Um, we have a couple injuries right now, which we're going to battle through and, you know, see how we'll play this weekend. But, I mean, I have confidence in this team, and I always have, and the biggest thing is staying consistent and everyone knowing their role and stepping up and I truly believe that if we continue to do that in our roles and, and step up that this team can really go far. Thank you both for being here very much today, and uh, we'll talk to you again in about a month or so. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Amanda Johnson and Caitlin Russell here on Golden Bear Insider. And again, those games coming up this weekend with St. Cloud State and Minnesota Duluth. That will be uh, at 6 o'clock on Friday against St. Cloud and then Saturday at 4. So, of course, we'll have the uh, live stream of those for you as well through the website. You can watch those as Concordia will look to continue that winning streak. Guys that played well in that game, and we had some other guys that uh, struggled, you know, and, and Ted was one of those guys that got in foul trouble uh, both both games this weekend, and it hurt us uh, more than anything. Um, so we got we to gotta figure out a way to get him to uh, – not foul so much, but you know, also also be uh, aggressive at the same time without picking up uh, some cheap ones there. But uh, then we turn back around on Saturday against Crookston, uh, up four at the half. Again, we play good offensively, but not great defensively. Uh, and then then we just come out second half and we came out flat again. And I reminded the guys at the half. I said, listen, we we we're we're in a great situation. Don't get too high off of this. You know, I mean, feel good about where we're at. But you know, there's 20 minutes of basketball left and. Uh, we come out and they go on a 22 to four run, and just like that, you know, but the nice thing about it was our, our guys didn't give in. Uh, they, they didn't quit. We we dug in. Uh, one point game with under a minute to play, and we just we couldn't we couldn't finish the dang thing. So, but I, I was I was uh, I was proud of their effort, and, and uh, you know they were they uh, they fought back. You know, so I liked I liked the dog in them. You know, for doing that, and you know. Right now, I just think when we get in those tight situations, our guys don't know how to just finish that. I think they tighten up a little too much. And I just want to I want to figure out a way to keep those guys relaxed and calm and, and be able to finish the game out on, on a positive note. And Ted, I guess kind of build, building off of that, being out there on the floor, is there anything you've kind of picked up over the year that the, the team can maybe use, you yourself can use when a team's putting a run to, again, uh, together against you to kind of nip that in the bud and, and settle back in? Yeah, we just kind of need to focus on when a team's on a run is just defense event and trying to stop it and not trying to just battle basket with basket that's do you find sometimes you know a lot of young players on this team that maybe everybody tries to to make that one play to end it themselves and do a little too much and you're trying to get everybody to calm down play a little more as a unit I just think that uh you know we 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 have, uh, I mean, Brennan Matthews is, is our leading scorer, our leading rebounder, uh, a young man that's just a sophomore right now. And I think guys are still trying to figure out who that go-to guy is down the stretch of games. And, and uh, you know, at times we try to get the ball inside to Ted or whatever it may be. Uh, 
you know, we, we try to rely a little bit on our, our motion offense to, for, you know, for guys to create some things. You know, Sam's starting to come into his own a little bit more on coming off that high ball screen and creating shots for himself or other guys. And, and right now I think they're still trying to find that, that, that niche on, you know, how to close that game out. And I got to do a better job too. You know, I, it's, it's not just him. I got to do a better job of, of getting them in a, the right situation to, to close out. But Ted's completely right. It, it so starts with our defense. And, and as soon as we can continue to be better at that, uh, I think it'll clean some things up. Certainly with the way things have gone, you've been making some changes to the starting lineup, the rotation, working some things out there. Have you found a, a couple areas that you're comfortable with that you can kind of build off on as a foundation? Yeah, you know, I, I, these guys, you know, I don't care who starts the game. I just care who comes in and, and, and are playing for each other and are competing and, and are out there trying to win a basketball game. Uh, so for me, it's not who starts, it's, it's who's out there performing. You know, it's, it's, it's about performance levels and, and guys that are doing what we're asking them to do and, and playing the right way. Um, uh, but, you know, we got a good eight-man rotation going on right now, and I feel very comfortable with that. And, Ted, for you, how do you feel your game individually has grown over the course of the season? Um, I've gotten more confident probably around the rim and just <laughs> finishing with both hands and just kind of going through guys and working on stuff like that. What's the biggest difference you've noticed in uh, bigs at this level versus what you saw when you were in high school? <laughs> uh, physicality definitely has improved and just size of guys for sure. And everybody is more. Every team has a solid big guy. In high school, there would be teams that want to have big guys that that good. And and for you, I you know I, certainly the team you want you're realistic about what's going on. You're disappointed about the way some of these games have gone. But how do you kind of stay positive as a group and and keep that attitude um, of just continuing to fight as you go through the the final month or so of the season here? Well, uh, the season itself hasn't been what we all wanted, but at the end of the year, when the conference tournament starts, everybody starts 0-0. Zero, zero. And so that's just kind of one thing that we're looking at from here on out. And has that kind of been your message to the team of, you know, everybody gets a shot to play in that conference tournament? I guess what do you just kind of want to see out of these last six games or so here of the regular season to, to build toward that and, and build toward mm -hmm. the future? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and I try to remind these guys that the most important game is this Friday, you know, and, and, and eventually here over the next course of the next six games, we'll get to that conference tournament. Ted's right. It, it starts 0-0. Zero, zero. It's anybody's. And I think if you look at our league, uh, every team's been beaten. Uh, it's it's not like it was a year ago uh, where two teams were, were super heavy. And, I mean, everybody's beatable. Um, and the teams that are at the top, we've been in some of those games. We just haven't had the opportunity to close those games out. So uh, I just I just want these guys to, to start playing the right way all the time, more consistent on both ends of the floor. And, and, you know, that's all we can ask right now. And I told the guys, as long as you guys are doing that, Stop looking at the wins and losses at this point. Let's just figure out a way. How can we get better as a team, and how can we stay uh, focused? And and uh, you know, it, it's the uh, one thing I'll say about this group is they've been uh, pretty positive. I mean, they bounce back and and uh, you know come to practice on Monday. They got they got good energy. They got good vibe to them. Um, but we're also trying to continue to make sure that, that we're doing the same thing too. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to get down on guys when they're already down, you know, so we're trying to inject a little bit of different approach to it. Um, and, and it's not always my approach the way I like to do it. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, I, I kind of know where this team's at right now and, and where we are at mentally and, and, um, you know, and where I'm at mentally and my staff. And so we're just trying to, we're trying to stay focused and positive on, on how we can get better. And, and I think that'll help us as we move forward. And I'm sure the focus a lot more on, on your side of things and what your, your team is doing than any specifics with the opponents. But as you bring in St. Cloud State and Minnesota Duluth this weekend, mm -hmm. what can uh, fans kind of expect to see out of those two teams? Yeah, St. Cloud has got, uh, has got two of the uh, more prolific scorers in the league, uh, two guards that are very, very good. Um, and they got a nice uh, team. Obviously, their, their record indicates that they're having a heck of a year this year, uh, one of the top teams in the north. Uh, and then Duluth, uh, you know, Matt and I, uh, Matt Bowen and I have talked, and he's going through the same things we're going through right now. They are young. Uh, I think our two teams are probably the youngest two teams that, that play so many young kids. Um, and so that's going to be uh, that's going to be an interesting game for sure. Uh, you know, we're going to see what youth team is going to come out on top, and, and hopefully uh, we can get our fans behind us on alumni night and and uh, you know get them some excited to be about. All right, well, Joey and uh, Ted, thank you for being here today. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Joey James, Ted Brown here on Golden Bear Insider. So.
Again, we'll have the games coming up this weekend. The doubleheader is beginning at 6 uh, tomorrow and then at 4 on Saturday. Concordia returns home for the second to last weekend of the regular season. So definitely encourage you to come out to the Gangelhoff Center, as Joey talked about. But certainly, uh, if you can't make it, we'll have the coverage available through the website cspbears.com as well. So that wraps up this month's edition of the show. Definitely want to thank all of our guests again, Sam Johnson and Kelly Burney from Track and Field, Shannon Courier from Football, Mo Dunnigan, Kaylee Heinel from Lacrosse, uh, Steve Bellis and Taryn McMillan from Soccer, of course Amanda Johnson, uh, Caitlin Russell from the women's basketball team, and then Joey James and Ted Brown. We'll be back again first week of March to have another edition of the show. But until then, thank you so much for watching. This has been Golden Bear Insider.